Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you some tips and tricks that should help you with your photo editing workflow when you're in Photolab 6. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on the editing itself, but more on some very specific tools and their features that I kind of wish I knew about when I started using Photolab 6 because they would have saved me a lot of time. All right, let's start out with some tips for when you're actually editing your image. And the first thing you want to do really is make sure you're working in the new DXOY gamut that came out with uh, Photolab 6. Uh, I have a whole video on why this is a big deal, but basically it'll give you a lot more flexibility when you're working with the colors and you'll get better results. Now let's go over to the details tab. This is where you're going to find your uh, D prime, D prime XD, etc., and your lens sharpness. And if we click on D prime, you may not notice much difference, and that's because D prime is not being applied to the entire image uh, because it requires so much processing power. What they've done is just take a subsample of the image and displayed it here. And you can click on this little target thing here and move this around to see different parts of the image and what effect D prime is having on it. So you just have to use this loop and you can't really see the effects of deep prime on the entire image until you actually export it. Uh, but I'm going to show you a little trick there uh, a little bit later on. Same thing for lens sharpness. If we click on this, the lens sharpness uh, details will be reflected uh, in the loop right away. However, you'll notice this little uh, cross through the eye. So it says here the effect of this correction can only be previewed at zoom levels higher than 75%. So you actually have to zoom in to 75% as indicated up here to see the difference that the lens sharpening is doing. So if I turn this off, you can see maybe it got a little less sharp. And then if I turn this on, it's gotten a lot sharper. So anytime you see this little uh, crossed out eye on any of these tools, it's, you, you can hover over it. It'll tell you what you need to do if you can to see the effect of this particular tool. Same thing for like unsharp mass. As soon as I click on that, you'll see that uh, there's a little, net, you know, crossed out eye. And if I zoom in the 75, 80%, then I can see the effect. But I can always see it right away in this little loop window here, but I'm not gonna see it on the entire image. I have to zoom in. All right, now let's go to the local adjustments panel. But before we do that, I'm gonna deactivate this uh, little window. So I can just click on the target button here or hit the escape key on my keyboard and that'll deactivate the tool. Uh, so let's go to local adjustments and I'm just gonna do a couple of quick things. Um, let me reduce the brush size and I can do it manually up here or if I hold the control key down and roll the wheel on my mouse, I can enlarge the brush very quickly this way. So let me get it down to size and then I'll just brush in here and then I wanna brush in this side but you can see the tool is in the way, right? So I can hit the letter E key on my keyboard to hide the tool so I can just kind of get right in here. And then hit the E key again to bring it back and then I can just brighten this. Brighten the eyes just a little bit. Now let's do one more adjustment. So I'm going to deactivate this, enlarge my brush, and let me back out. And I'm going to just brush down here and make this area a little darker. So if I'm going to see the changes uh, made only from these specific adjustments, while these tools are active, I can do that just by clicking on the compare key. So if I click on this, it's going to show me the before and I can let go. And this is the after, or I can click on the slider and then I can use the slider to kind of see the difference this way. Now, if I want to see only the changes I made to the eyes, I can go over to the layer here and deactivate it or hide it. And now I'm only seeing the difference that the uh, changes I made to the eyes, for example. And you'll also notice that when I slide this slider over, there's a little crossed out eye here on this tool showing you that this is not visible. So if I turn it back on over here, now the tool is back and I can just slide back and forth. And if I want to see the image without these overlays of these tools, I can just click on the compare key up here. Well, let me deactivate the slider and then do the compare like this. Now, uh, let me go ahead and just do a little bit more editing to this. Let's say I want to make everything around the puppy nice and dark. Uh, so I'm going to bring the brightness down a little bit more. 
And the brush is kind of feathered into the puppy itself. So what I can do is hit the Alt key, and then I can erase just in the center where the mask is, like so. And I may have done a little too much, so I can brush it back in, and then take a little bit out again. And that looks about right. All right, I'm going to stop here and do a few more edits and then come back. All right, so I finished editing the image, and I've exported the JPEG with DeepPrime applied. And if I want to look at that, I can just go back to my library, go to where I exported it, and this is the exported image with DeepPrime applied. Now, let's go back to the original image. If I want to compare these two, I can do that. I can compare the exported image against what I was working with when I was doing the editing. All I have to do is go to the drop-down menu and select one of the JPEG outputs that I created. So let's select that one. And now when I click Compare, I'm comparing it directly against that JPEG I just created. Or I can do a side-by-side, -side, and then I can kind of zoom in and see what kind of job D-Prime did on the image. And I think it did a really nice job. But that's just a quick way to do a comparison. Or if I want to compare it back to the original raw image that was unprocessed, I can just click on that. So there's the before and after. Now, if I want to compare this unprocessed raw image against the JPEG, uh, what I recommend you do is to just create a virtual copy first, like this. And then, okay, so now we're in the virtual copy. It's going to apply the changes. But let's go back to our library. So you can see we have the virtual copy number two here, and then we have the master file that we were editing with. So now I'm just going to reset this one. I'm going to reset the master copy. And now I'm going to select compare it against the JPEG. And I can put these side by side. So now I can really see what a difference it made uh, applying Deep Prime and doing all my editing. All right, um, so basically what I've done is erased all of the uh, hard work I did to this image. Uh, and I could at this point just click Control Z and undo the reset. But if I happen to close Photolab and come back and open it back up, I can't do Control Z and all those settings would have been lost. But that's why we created the virtual copy because I can always go back at any time, right click on the virtual copy, do copy correction settings. And there's a shortcut here, Control Shift C and then right click on the master copy and do paste correction settings. In this case, paste all correction settings. And now I've recovered all of the uh, editing that I did back to the master file. Now let's go back to the master file and I'll just show you one more thing. You'll also notice that the virtual copies are listed here as well. So I can compare it against the virtual copy directly, side by side, and just confirm that all of the settings did get uh, pasted over. Now, another good use of this compare tool, uh, particularly with uh, virtual copies, is let's go back and select the virtual copy. And then um, let's go ahead and convert this to black and white. And now I want to compare this against the master copy that has all of my edits. I just go up here and I say compare to master copy. So this is a great way to compare uh, different versions of the same image without having to export first and then look, you know, use another tool to compare them side by side. All right, now let me give you a quick couple of bonus tips. Now, if you remember, when we right click on the image, we can do copy correction settings. You don't have to paste it to one image. You could paste it to as many images as you want and just right click and do paste correction settings all. And then it'll paste it to all of the images that you highlighted. And then also when I right click, you'll see all these little shortcut commands, right? And this is really handy. You'll eventually memorize a bunch of these. Uh, but if you want to see them all, you just go to the Help section and click on Shortcuts. And this is where they'll list all of the uh, shortcut commands. And that's all I have for today. And for all of you watching, if you find these videos helpful, consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below because they are greatly appreciated and they help me to continue making videos like this for you. And I want to thank everyone for watching again, and I hope to see you again soon.